Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. We're moving on to task four. So let's catch up here in our Windows 8 Camp in a Box hands-on lab. We're in the first lab. Let's look at the HTML. We are in exercise one, create a Windows Store app, exercise four, customize the branding. And so what it asks us to do is first of all, go to our start page and get rid of this ugly uh, default tile on our home page and there's a couple of different ways to do this uh, it says hey drag it down and it'll make a selection um, or use your finger to do it I found if you just right click on it and then click on install that works for me okay and so now let's get back and now what we want to do is grab the logo small logo splash screen store logo and Y logo from the images folder on the starting materials so you recall that there was a download that was available with this video series and inside of that in the resources directory I grabbed all of the uh, files that you'll need or you can just go to if you didn't do that if you didn't download that file you can go to the uh, to the Windows 8 CS folder where the Camp in a Box was installed. Go to Labs and then 00-AssetCS. And so we want to go in the Images directory in either case. And what we want to grab out are these, are these five images. And so I'm just going to get the target ready here. I'm going to drag these and drop them into the Assets folder. It asks, do you want to replace the uh, files with the same name. I'm going to say yes, apply to all items. And now, whenever we run the application, two things should happen. We get a nice splash screen. And when we look at the tiles, we can see that we get a tile here, a small tile. The task that we're asked to, uh, to perform in this, in, this, uh, in this task, in, this, in the steps, is to go into a file that's called the package.appx manifest. And when we open that file up, it's a beautiful designer and it has a number of tabs. And we'll be coming back to this time and a time throughout uh, this series. What it wants us to do now is to define a wide logo. The rest of the logos are have the exact same name as they did uh, whenever we originally set up the grid app template. So what we want to do is uh, click the little ellipse next to the wide logo text box and we're gonna navigate down to our assets directory and we're gonna choose the wide logo dot PNG and click open and let's save this and now let's run the application again I'm not sure what's gonna happen since we already ran it once and didn't follow the instructions correctly yeah it's still using the small uh, tile so to change it we'll just reperform that action of uh, either uh, unpinning or uninstall or I can just select larger now and you can see we have the larger version awesome okay so as you peruse this you can see that there are a number of interesting settings here that would affect for example what orientations or rotations we support name background color for our app thing called these badges and toast capable and as we look through the capabilities so again we're gonna come back to this a couple of times uh, throughout the series and I'm pretty interested in uh, in enabling some of the functionality that we see here but what about this package.appx manifest file what in the world is this thing well I think what we should do is be careful but right click on this file in the solution Explorer and select open with and I'm going to choose open with the uh, notepad and click OK. And we can see this file now in notepad. And it's just an XML file. And it has its own XML namespace. And you can see that there are things declared here like uh, the identity name, this long GUID, the publisher, which happens to be my first name. We could fill that in with something a little bit more meaningful. But then the display name is going to be Contoso Cookbook, the logo, and it even has here the application, the executable, and the entry point, which is Contoso Cookbook.app, and we'll come back to that in just a little bit. But essentially, 
This is just a manifest file. And I like to think of an app manifest the same way that I think about uh, like a ship's manifest. If this were, you know, a ship on the high seas, uh, the captain checks over all the cargo that he'll be hauling. I guess that it would include the people that should be on board as well. And it's essentially the manifest is extra information about the cargo or, or what's being shipped, the shipment. It's metadata, including a checklist of everything that is included in the shipment. The app manifest tells Windows 8 what's on board. So it contains the details of the app that'll be executed by the Windows runtime. The app's name, the publisher, the capabilities, what uh, where the entry point is for the application, permissions to the system's resources, like uh, I need access to webcams, to microphones, to the internet, to parts of the file system, to uh, specific parts of the file system, like the user's document directory or the music or their, or their videos and so forth. So I think it's really important that we not make any changes to this file whatsoever. Don't touch it. If it asks if you want to save your changes, click no. We just wanted to get in and take a look at what was under the hood. So this little designer that we see in Visual Studio just sits on top of this XML file and it allows us to make changes without having to go in and tinker with, uh, with the text ourselves. So, and I say all that to say this, the manifest is an important part of introducing our app to the Windows 8 operating system, and we should probably leave it at that. As we add features to our app, we're gonna be modifying the app manifest, but only by using this dialog. Okay, and we did notice uh, that it identified the entry point. We can see that entry right here as well under application UI tab within the package.app manifest. And that points us here to this app.xaml file that we've seen time and again, as well as the app.xaml.cs file, which we haven't really looked at. So what exactly is this? Well, it's the place we noticed where the resource dictionaries are defined. We were able to uh, kind of pull in the standard styles.xaml file. We were also able to define a key called app name that, that uh, allowed us to change the name that was displayed on our uh, grouped items page. But what really is this file? Well, simply put, it's the starting point for our app. Actually, it represents a new instance of the windows.ui.xaml.application class, which provides all the essential plumbing for a new instance of your app to start up and to get to work. So first of all, it's the entry point for the app, and as the entry point, it's a perfect place for some initialization code, if you have any. Uh, and so it also maintains a collection of resources so that's why in the XAML there's the definitions for example, any external XAML files that would affect the entire application like that standard styles.xaml. It also manages the, the app's lifetime. Specifically, if we look at the code behind in the app.xaml.cs, we can see that it's handling an on-launched event and an on-suspending event. Uh, now, there are some others as well uh, they just haven't been defined and there's no handler code just yet, but we'll, we'll add this functionality as we go throughout this application and we'll talk about those key events uh, much later on when we talk about the life cycle of a Windows 8 app. And then finally, what it'll do is handle any uh, unhandled exceptions that might, that might bubble up to the, uh, the app so that the user doesn't actually see any ugly error messages, okay? All right, so that's it for this lesson. So far, we've taken our time and we've worked our way through the first exercise. In addition to the tasks and the steps in the lab, we also learned a little bit about the grid app template. We learned about XML and specifically XAML and all of its features, especially those that were used uh, like binding to static resources and where those static resources are defined. For example, the standard styles.xaml. Uh, we, we learned about styles and templates. We learned about the relationship between XAML and the code behind files, the CS files, how they're two parts of a whole that get compiled into intermediate language. And just now we learned about the app.xaml and the application class. We learned about the package.appx manifest and how it introduces our app to Windows 8. So we've covered a lot of ground. And now it's time to start turning this template into our app not just the template, and begin working with the data itself. And so I think we're going to begin that in the next lesson. We'll see you there. Thank you.
Mm-hmm.